Hey, this is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today is all about updating CSS variables with JavaScript. And I've just created a little simple tutorial to show kind of the kinds of things you can do with this. As the user comes here and completes step one, you use the CSS variable here to set this progress uh, width, and you can update it to go straight to step two. They click step two, you update it to go to step three. Step three, you update it, and then kind of switch out the emoji here, add it back in the middle. So these are the kinds of things you can do with CSS variables, and you can update them with JavaScript as the user interacts with your page. All right, let's jump right in. All right, so I've got my uh, index.html page here open up. And uh, the important thing to note here, I'll, I'll just point out two things. Uh, first of all, I've got this data dash progress. Now you might say like, that's not an attribute I know. And that's because I made it up. All right, you can add whatever attributes you want. Like, you know, we've got classes, we've got like alt attributes, things like that. You can add your own by saying data dash and then naming it whatever you want. And you can use these in JavaScript or CSS. You can select them and do certain things with them. We're gonna be using these percentages then uh, to where when we click on step one, it'll actually move the progress bar to 47%. We click on step two, it'll move it to 82.5, which is right over here. Step three will move all the way to 100%. That's the first thing to note. Second thing to note is this uh, progress container, this progress bar. You see down here, this is, uh, it's just sitting here below and it's got no um, content in it. We're just updating this with CSS. And I'll show you how we're getting this emoji in here and all that in just a, in just a moment. I lied, there's a third thing and that would be step three, which is appropriate for a third thing. And uh, all of these buttons have a class of step on them, but we've also added step three here um, so that we know when we've clicked on this final button. All right, now let's jump over to the CSS and I'll just show you a few things that are important. Um, number one, this uh, these buttons here, when we click on a button uh, and we add, we're gonna add a class completed to it. With that class completed, we're just gonna change this uh, button here to a color green. All right, also, I mentioned the uh, progress bar here. We've just got it set it to a height of 10. We've got a uh, background color on it. We have this transition, so it'll kind of slide to the next section whenever we change the width. And then this width is using a CSS variable called progress. And you can uh, denote these variables like this. Um, you can do it on the root, which is kind of the normal thing. Or if you, you know you're only ever gonna use that variable on a single element, you can also just do it on that element, but I've just got everything declared here on the root. Right now it's set to 12%, which is at step one. That's where we want it to start uh, each time. Now I've got this set to relative because afterward, or I have an after um, pseudo class here for this emoji, and I've added it as a content here, and it's positioned absolute just to the right of wherever the progress bar ends. Whenever we add a completed class to the actual whole progress bar, which will be when we click on step three, it will change out the emoji and then move it to the middle 50% um, off to the right. And then we kind of do some transform translating magic to get it to be actually centered on that line uh, like we want it to be. Okay, so that's the index.html, that's the CSS. Now let's get into the JavaScript, that's why you came here. All right, we're gonna do a few things. First of all, we're gonna go ahead and select the buttons. So we'll come here and just say, uh, let's call these, well, let's just call them buttons. And we'll do a query selector all. And you might remember we had a class on all of those just called step. And uh, that should give us all of our buttons. Next, we need to grab that progress bar. So we'll do that, progress bar. And again, we'll do document.query selector. And we're gonna grab the progress bar. All right, so we've got the two things we need up front. Now what we're gonna do is loop over all of the buttons uh, in uh, this node list. And we're gonna use a for each loop to add an event listener on each of them. So we'll come in here and we'll just say buttons.foreach. Uh, we'll just call them button, like that. For each button, we want to add an event listener. And that event is going to be a click. And when they click, let's just console log something so that we know that it's working. Console log, you clicked a thing. All right, so let's come here. We clicked the thing, clicked the thing, we clicked another thing. Okay, so it's working so far. We've got a basic loop set up. Now what we wanna do is just update that progress bar with whatever that data dash progress is. Now, the way you can uh, access 
data attributes, custom data attributes, is to just call whatever you're working off of. So this is the button, the thing we clicked on, and then say dot data set. And now you just give do another dot notation and just whatever name you're, you gave your data set, your data attribute. And we called that progress, data dash progress. So now if we come in here and we click, we'll get 47%, 82%, and 100%. So whatever button we click on, it's saying, give me the data dash progress. And that's what we've done. So let's go ahead and copy this because we're going to use it in a moment here. Because what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to update our CSS variable that was dash dash progress with this data set. It's pretty easy to do, actually. We'll just grab progress bar dot style, and then you just say set property. This is how you update a CSS variable with JavaScript. And then you name the property. So it was just dash dash progress. You do a comma. And then you just add whatever it is you want to update it to. So let's say we wanted to update it every time we clicked on any button. We wanted to update it to uh, 100%. Well, if we did that, as soon as we click here, it's just going to jump all the way to the end. Now, we don't want to do that every time. We want to use that custom uh, data set to update the progress. So we can add that if we use back ticks here. And then we can use this template string and just add in what we copied earlier, button.dataset.progress. And now when we come in here and click, it'll use that percentage to jump to the next area. Now, this is really cool to be able to update CSS variables. You can have your users do all kinds of things. Like let's say, for instance, you had a color picker. They picked a color and you assigned whatever they picked to your uh, CSS variable called color picker or whatever. As they're interacting with your page, then they kind of get a say in how stuff looks or how stuff operates. And you can use these CSS variables to do lots of cool styling things based on the user's input. Hey, future Chris here. I was editing this and realized I probably should have called out one thing, which is since we selected that progress bar and we're updating the variable on that progress bar, only the progress bar actually gets that variable changed. So if you want to change the variable for the entire document or your entire site, you actually need to update the root itself. So let me go ahead and drop in a screenshot here of what that would look like. You'd have to actually uh, grab the root itself and you can select it just like you would in CSS with a colon root. And then uh, when you update the style, you'll see there you have to update root.style and that will update it for your entire site. But the way we did it, we're only updating that progress bar. That's the only thing it's used on. So that's why I was updating it on the actual element. But there's kind of two ways I guess you could uh, change a property. Uh, you can either change that property, that custom CSS variable, only for an element by selecting that element, or you can do it for the whole document by selecting the root and then changing the style dot set property on the root. Okay, back to the video. All right, now we have a couple other things we need to do. The first thing was that button. We wanted to add a class list of completed to it. You might remember that when we do that, it turns it green. And then the last thing we want to do is when we have any button that has a step three class on it, we want it to actually apply that green uh, label to it. So let's just come in here and do an if statement. We're going to say if the class list contains, and it just has to con contain that step three class. If that's the case, then we want to add a new class to the actual progress bar. Same class that we added up here, except instead of progress bar, it is going to, or instead of button, it'll be for the progress bar. So we'll go progress bar. And now as we come, we click here, we click here, we click here, and it jumps to the middle. All right, the power of being able to control CSS variables with JavaScript, with user input and uh, interaction is really, really uh, interesting and allows you to do some pretty cool stuff with your site. So right now, this is just kind of a basic introduction of how you set uh, a data attribute here in HTML how you use CSS variables, and how you can update them with JavaScript. In the future videos, I'll be using this more frequently, but I don't want to have to explain kind of how to do it each time. And so I figured I'd make a short little video explaining how to do it with this simple tutorial. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you like this, please hit the like button and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Happy coding.